Este es Alberto Martínez de aquí, es el licenciado de Wii and the PhD from the University of La Plata, 2000 and 2005, respectively. His thesis was in light propagations in, uh, in atmospheric turbulences, but uh, one year later he moved to work in time series analysis and he got a permanent position already in 2006, when he was very young, in the Argentinian Research Council. And uh, already last year he got a promotion because the first time you enter in a permanent position you need a director. In this case, also Pablo Rosso, that some of you also know him. But uh, last year he got a promotion, now he's like an independent researcher there, so he doesn't have any more uh, director, which means that he's uh, doing very well. Mm -hmm. And I'm very happy to have him here. And uh, certainly his main interest is that time series analysis, and today he's going to talk about the uh, entropy and the statistical complexity, and probably something he's doing with that sort. Thank you very much, Luciano. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, Claudia, for this uh, presentation. The idea of this, uh, first of all, first of all, I would like to advance, uh, I would like to apologize in advance from my bad English, I have very poor English, so maybe there will be some problem with my pronunciation. Please let me know if you don't understand something in order to clarify. And the, the goal of this, the objective of this seminar is to try to convince you about the ability of these two particular information theory quantifiers, the permutation, the permutation entropy and the statistical complexity in order to extract the useful information from the IC. This is the idea. So, uh, I will show you at the last part of the seminar several applications in which this quantifier is estimated and we can extract useful information from numerical and experimental time C. This is more or less the idea. But first, it is necessary to introduce this quantifier. Uh, Christina Masoler, some weeks ago, introduced the same, the same quantifier. She also used this particular quantifier. But well, in order to understand some of the rest of the result of this seminar, it is necessary to review some point related with the definition of this quantifier. Uh, the, the content of the seminar is more or less the following. First, I will try to motivate the use of this quantifier. Then I, I will introduce the quantifier, in particular, uh, two different quantifiers, a general entropy and statistical complexity measure defined by using a statistical description. And in the third point, I will analyze in detail the Van and Pompe visualization methodology. This is a particular way to extract, to estimate the probability distribution associated to a time series we, we use to estimate the two previous information theory quantifiers. It's clear that you have a time series. You need to first extract or estimate the probability distribution associated to this time series. We use the particular simulation methodology. And then we estimate the quantifier by using this particular ordinal form of obtaining the probability distribution. The main part of the the main part of the seminar is related with the application. First, we will, I will I will show you uh, the analysis of two important stochastic process: the function of linear motion and the function of Gaussian noise. This is important stochastic process because they are used in several in as model in several in several fields, not, not only in physics, also in problem of coastal dispersion, also in problem of atmospheric turbulence, also in econophysics. They are really important, so it's important to try to characterize this particular stochastic process. Then I will introduce an econophysic approach. We, by using this particular, uh, this particular quantifier, try to classify the stock market according to the correlation present in the financial time series. Then I will analyze uh, Tangle identification. In particular, we will show, I will show, but this work is, is in collaboration both with Ingo, Miguel, and, and Claudio. We will try to show that this particular uh, statistical quantifier are able to, uh, to identify the presence of a time delay in a system. In particular, in this case, we use the weather now material system as a test, in order to test the ability of the quantifier. And finally, the time scale of the chaotic semiconductor lights dynamical will be identified by using this approach. It will end the seminar with some conclusion related with the previous result. So, well, the idea first to motivate in some way the use of statistical or another kind of tool in order to extract useful information from time series. In this plot, in this, in this slide, I have two different plots. The first one related with the numerical chaotic time trace simulated by using the Lamco Association model in the chaotic regime, 
this is associated with the eukaryotic dynamic, and in the second plot we have the uh, numerical simulation of the functional Gaussian noise, in particular in this case with hard exponent 0 0.7, uh, 0 0.7, in this case you have a persistent a stochastic process, this is not important here. But, well, we have two different, totally different dynamics. The first one we have the chaotic dynamic, and the second one we have the stochastic dynamic, and it is necessary to introduce a statistical tool to another kind of tool in order to discriminate these two different, totally different behaviors, the deterministic in the first case, and stochastic in the second one. Yes, it's clear that chaos in experimental data cannot always be distinguished from stochasticity using a statistical analysis, and identifying determinism in experimental data remains a challenging problem. So, the idea to introduce new quantifier, for example, for instance, to, to give uh, an answer to this, to this problem is really important. It's very important. Well, uh, maybe the more natural approach to analyze time series is the channel information. Yes, it is, it is, it is quite well known, given a probability distribution P associated to a time series, so, sorry, given a probability distribution P associated to a time series or, or a process, the uh, channel information measure is defined in this way, and which kind of information we obtain from the, the channel information? Well, well, in the case of the periodic motion, we have that the, the, channel, information, uh, the channel information will be equal to zero because in this case we have a completely order and predictable system. And in the case, for example, of a Gaussian white noise, we have that the channel information will be near to one because in this case we have a completely disordered and a predictable system. This is the idea. So it's even uh, given some kind of information related with the order and the predictability of the system and the analysis. It is also clear that this, this statistical tool is not enough in order to analyze time series because random measures like the entropy don't quantify the degree of structure or part of the time series. So it is necessary to, read, to introduce a, a new quantifier in order to try to characterize the complexity of the time series. The idea is to find a way to define a complexity associated to a time series. In relation with complexity, we refer to the not trivial collective structure or pattern, absent at the local level, but emerging from the interaction between the element as a global system. So, the, the approach we follow in, in order to define the measure complexity associated to a time series is this, the, the, the approach introduced by Lucas Ruiz Manchin and Calvet in 1995. They propose that the uh, crystal uh, is a totally ordered process, so in this case, you, you have, you, you have, you, it is necessary to find, you, know, you can define that in this case the complexity should be equal to zero. And in the case of uh, ideal gas, also the complexity is equal to zero. Why? Well, because in this case, you have a very boring system, not a structure, not, not trivial structure, are present in the system. Yes, this is all the entities, all the elements of the system are are all the same, so you do not have um, diversity associated to the system. This is more or less the idea. So we need the quantity that for a crystal should be equal to zero, for an ideal gas should, should also be equal to zero. And he proposes, they proposes to use this quantity, the complexity as a product of the entropy and the disequilibrium. The disequilibrium is the distance to the equilibrium. So, uh, it is clear that a crystal should be an entropy equal to, uh, equal to zero, and an ideal gas, an ideal gas uh, have uh, an entropy equal to one, because the, the information needed to, to, to explain the system is minimal, minimal in this case, and maximal in the case of the ideal gas. And the non-equilibrium, which is the distance to the equilibrium is maximal, is maximal in the case of the crystal and is minimal in the case of the ideal gas. So, well, they propose to define the complexity as the product of the entropy and the disequilibrium and the distance to the equilibrium. In this particular work, work they use the Euclidean distance to measure the, the distance to the equilibrium. The idea is totally simple. Uh, you have a probability distribution associated to the system and another probability distribution associated to the equilibrium, the probability, and you measure the clear distance between these two different probability distributions. We, we, um, when, when you say okay. distance to the, to the equilibrium, what, what is the distance to the equilibrium? Yes, to the probability, this is the idea. Yeah, but, but, okay, but it's not distance to thermodynamic equilibrium. 
No, no. Entonces, aquí está un poquito de hemodinámica que hubo. No, 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 no. Yes, no. Dice, de, 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 de distance to day, y que probablemente distribuye la sociedad que tú dices, que tú dices. ¿Sí? Yes? So, you have two different probability distribution. P associated to the, to the regional system are the probability associated, associated to the criminal and, well, in this case, we don't use the uh, local distance, we use this particular measure of, uh, of distance associated to those to two different probability distribution that is the sensation and duration. This is a, an, improvement, an improvement with respect to the to the real distance because this is a, a distance defined between probability distribution is a, is a distance defined in the probability space, so it is better than the simple simple Euclidean distance. Uh, well, the advantage and disadvantage related with this particular measure of distance in the probability space is in this work, but well, there are a lot of advantages that. Uh, uh, that uh, allow us to conclude that this is better than the other. This is more or less the idea. So when well, these are the two important, these are the two quantifiers that I, I will use. But the main, the main, or one of the main problem in the estimation of this quantifier is the probability distribution associated to the density that you will use in order to estimate the quantifier. This is this is a key problem. In this case, we will use the Van and Pompe symbolization methodology in order to extract the probability distribution associated to the time series. We have the time series X in this particular case. We need to choose two different parameters, the main dimension B and the main delay tau. In the particular case in which we choose, for example, D equal to 4 and tau, and the main delay equal to 1, we, we have to choose the first four elements, consecutive elements of the time series, and it is necessary to order this, this element so you can associate this sequence to a permutation. That's the reason because we, we, we call then the quantifier permutation, the permutation entropy, the permutation of statistical complexity. The, the, the probability distribution associated to the time series is obtained by analyzing each one of these sequences and related or each point of the embedding space is mapped onto one of these uh, permutations. See, in, in, in the particular case that the main dimension is equal to 4, you have Different, order, different possible permutations, so you will have 24 different elements in the probability distribution. Yes? So you, you obtain a probability distribution associated to the time series with the relative frequency, uh, frequencies of this particular sequence. Yes? This, this approach is natural in some way. Yes, I, I, I am lost. Mm -hmm. uh, the, what is the space you are embed, in which you are embedding the series? The 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 main dimension in this no, case. No, the space. So it's, it's a sort of four dimension, but what are the yes dimensions? yes in this case this this uh, this element I have to order these four elements and uh, I have to I have to just see which permutation is associated with each particular element. In particular, in this case, we have these four elements. The four elements related with the main dimension b equal to four, and tau equal equal to one is related with you are, you are considering the consecutive element. You can. Okay. Okay. Uh, then you, you say that uh, you, these four elements, you, yes. have, you have to order these elements. 0, 2, 1, 3, which yes. is the relative order of those. Yes, the relative so order. You neglect the size of the element, mm -hmm. only the order. Is this one? Yes, yes. the important is the order of the element. You, uh, don't, you, you, don't take, you don't take into account the amplitude of the, of the value of the time series. You are only taking into account the order. Yes? Yes. What is the problem if you to calculate the initial entropy if you just use a histogram? Yes, I think we show the result related with this with this point, with this particular point. Because I need to justify in some way that this is a good probability distribution. This way to extract the probability distribution as a bit different time series is good. Well this is probably includes time or includes evolution. The other thing just Yes, the temporal correlation is included in this case, and the temporal correlation is not included in the histogram because in this case one are only taking into account the amplitude of the value of the time series. You can take the two time for this distribution, the three time and yes, 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 yes. In this case we are taking into account. Yes. But this is it is natural to consider the four consecutive elements in this case, but you can change the big delay in this case you, you for example in the case of tau equal to two, you don't take the four consecutive elements, it's not that you are alternating, but well and in some way we consider the pattern present in the time series with this particular way to study the distribution. Yes? 
So we obtain a probability distribution associated to the time series based on this ordinal pattern. Yeah, the relative frequency of the ordinal pattern present in the time series is giving us, is giving us the probability distribution. We consider that this is a good way to try the probability distribution associated uh, to a time series because while it's natural, it's fast and it's simple. And it has good result in relation with the presence of noise because the noise, if the noise is slow, it's slow, doesn't affect the order of the time series. Yes? Affect the value of either of each of the values of the time series, but the order is, is kept in some way. Yes, if the noise is slow, if you, 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 when you add noise to the time series, you will have this, exactly the same probability distribution, or more or less the same probability distribution. So, this robustness and the repression of noise is really, is really important in this particular way to extract the probability distribution associated to the time series and the dynamics. For example, in the case of hybridic motion, you have this probability distribution. In this case, I, I have chosen D equal to 4 to show this example. You have 24 different ordinal patterns, and in this case, only two are relevant, are significant. In the case of a Gaussian white noise, all the ordinal patterns are relevant, and you more or less have a uniform distribution in this particular case. Well, this particular way to extract the probability distribution associated with the time series is introduced in this particular paper several years ago, and is widely used in this particular way now. It's, it's, it's pretty <coughs> interesting because of this robustness and the presence of noise. This is the, the principal, the main point. The permutation entropy so will be the Shannon entropy, but evaluated by using this particular probability distribution. That's the reason because of the name permutation. And the permutation statistical complexity will be the product of the entropy and the distance <coughs> of the origin, but, but by using this particular probability distribution. So the idea is that, well, the, 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 yes. One just one question before you go on. In the, pre in the previous slide, you said the, in the left, the, sorry, the right panel is for a Gaussian noise? White noise, yes. But shouldn't you recover? A Gaussian distribution? No, no, no. no you are, it is clear that you are mapping a Gaussian distribution to another distribution in this particular quality distribution. But yes, I understand. Yes, I agree with you about that. Yes, you are mapping in this case, and maybe some properties associated with the original density are not conserved by the, by the, by the way to check the quality distribution associated with the particular density. But this is a Gaussian noise, a Gaussian noise, a uniform noise, or whatever. It is completely random, all the four, all the sequences of pi should be possible, and all of them should be equally possible. Because the, the, the fact that the next element is larger and is more than the first one is completely random. Yes. So the distribution should be the same for Gaussian noise, for uniform noise, for whatever distribution, for whatever yeah, quality. No, 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 not if there is correlation, but, but if, they, if the noise is independent time to time, that should be. Yes. Really yes, cool. yes, because you are taking the quality, the temporal correlation pressure, or you are magnifying the temporal correlation pressure in the time series. And this point is important if you if you want to analyze time time series with temporal correlation. Yes. What happens to the left picture if you take another D or another time? Uh, it's, it's similar. It's about being yeah. not in relation with with the different D. Yes, but in relation with tau now. Tau, tau is is uh, is very really important because you are. In some way, with the value of tau, you are subsampling the original time series. So, so you are changing the different time scale, you are considering the original time series. So you, then we show you some results where you can find that the time delay is important. It's important. In general, D, when you increase the value of D, when you increase the value of D, you are uh, increasing the length of the sequence. So in some way, you can say that more information about the, the past is, is obtained. Yes, but in this particular case, there is uh, they, well, I, I didn't prove for this particular example. This is only an example in order to, in order to understand the procedure. But, uh, well, in general, in our results, the, the, the effect of this is not so important, but, but the effect of tau is very important. And then I will show you some results related with this particular parameter. Yes? And, and uh, in the case of the periodic motion, uh, if the motion is uh, sinusoidal, you should get the two peaks of the same height because uh, the series is spent at the same time. No, it is clear that this is related yes. with the not with the peak. You have some mm. some relative frequency associated with another ordinal sequences. I don't know if you can see, but in this case, you have 
a little probability, yes, but it's clear that the important what is the reason of this result? In this case, we are considering that in this case you have all, uh, always the same sequence. So right. the probability distribution associated to this sequence is really high, and the probability distribution associated to this sequence is yeah, really high. I mean, why it's not symmetric? What? Why it's not symmetric? Oh, maybe because I, I didn't choose correctly. Yes, I only I, I, I generate a numerical a numerical solvent, but, but yes, I, maybe if, if I move, yes, yes, that's the problem. It's, it's only an example, not trying to, yes, it should be equal. It should be equal. If you consider a long yeah, solvent, yeah, yes, 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 yes. No, but you want one period. No, but I, I mean, if you, got, if you got this series and another I think there are no the no, it depends on the size of the window and the size of the window. Yes, 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 Symmetry. Well, this is the definition of the permutation entropy and the permutation of statistical complexity. The idea that this approach is natural, simply and fast, yes, and robots and the repression of noise. In order to justify in some, this is a uh, curiosity in this particular case, this is a book related with this particular, recently published, recently published, related with this particular way to study probability distribution of the time series. Sorry. Sorry, uh, okay. And uh, the name of the of the book, the title of the book, Permutation Complexity in Dynamical System, is not referring to this permutation statistical complexity, it's referring to more general concept, the idea to define different quantifiers, different quantities associated with the particular way, with this particular way to extract uh, to extract the, the probability distribution for LCDS. So for example, another tool you can use by using the same methodology is the number of forbidden patterns. There are some sequences that don't appear in a deterministic dynamic and in a stochastic process in general all the sequences will appear. So the, 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 the presence of forbidden pattern in a particular dynamic can be a fingerprint or, or, a, hallmark, or a hallmark of a deterministic <coughs> Yes, this, this is your idea. Mm -hmm. so, the, uh, I'm trying to justify that this book is not referring to this quantifier, it's referring to something more general that it, uh, are all the quantifiers defined by using this particular probability distribution and taking into account the advantages of this particular way to symbolize time series. It's clear that there are disadvantages. Uh, in order, uh, this, this particular, this particular uh, way to symbolize time series is really fast, but well, you, you uh, the cause of this natural, simple, and fast approach is, for example, that you don't ca you cannot discriminate be between di these two different behaviors. In this case, you have a uh, two decreasing sequence with different curvature, and both are associated to exactly the same permutation, to exactly the same coordinate sequence. So, so there is information you are losing, but well, in order to discretize a uh, time series, you are you you lose some information. You just are losing this, this information. This is not present. So informa information related with the curvature of the of the sequence is not being checked in, in this particular in this particular approach. So to calculate the complexity, you use the Shannon entropy, which I find okay. But then you multiply it by something else. Yes, this is the Shannon diversion. This is a, a, a no, this is a symmetrical way of the curve related. This is a good, a good approach to measure distance in probability space, better than the Euclidean distance. The first approach can be you have a probability distribution P and another associated with the equiprobability, and you measure, you, you, you estimate the Euclidean distance between these two different probability distributions. But this is not totally correct, and better results are obtained by using this approach. This is not my work, this is another work where we, we follow this, this idea because the results obtained with this particular way to find a competitor way. Yes, but we, yes, you, you can use the and distance. In particular, in the original world, of number they use the and distance to measure this, this distance, this is equilibrium. We consider that this way is better. It's better because it's a distance in the probability space. So, and um, there are uh, other advantages, important advantages related with this particular way to measure the distance. Yes, it's clear. 
Okay. Eh, in order to understand the importance of the wages in polar, uh, in order to extract the probability distribution associated to time series, I showed you in this slide an example. Here you have the bifurcation diagram associated to the logistic map, in this case you have the Lyapunov exponent, and in this case you have the permutation, the, sorry, the, the entropy and the complexity evaluated by, evaluated by using different probability distribution. In the first step you, you use the histogram, in the second one a binary symbolic approach, and the, the one the one type system. The, the first one is the histogram, yes, the, the first row. Yes, the, this is the, en the entropy and the complexity evaluated by using the probability distribution of the histogram. What time? Yes, yeah, yeah, sorry. And in this case, the, the binary symbolic approach, and in this case, the van and Pomp approach. So it is clear that according to the way to extract the probability distribution associated with the time series, the results are totally different. Mm -hmm. This is clear. So, The point here is that not only the quantifier is important, the, 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 the way to extract the probability distribution associated with time series is really important because in this case, for example, the complexity is decreasing, in this case, more or less, and in this case, it's increasing. We consider that these two results are better than the other because in, in both cases, you are following the behavior of the Yapunov exponent. It is clear that in this case, we have a, with the control parameter, this is the control parameter here, R, In the particular case that R is equal to 4, you have a fully developed chaotic, uh, chaotic dynamics, and in this case, you have a, a large value for the entropy and a large value for the complexity. Yes. So we consider that this approach is given the correct information with respect to this particular dynamic. But the complexity should be small. The presence of a structure in a chaotic dynamic is, is really high when you have a fully developed chaotic dynamics. This is the idea. This is the. So you don't have the noise case to compare. Yeah. The noise case should be zero. Yeah. Yes, in the case of uh, white noise, you you you, you have uh, entropy equal to one and complexity equal to zero. Yes. So we consider that intermediate value of the entropy and intermediate value of the complexity are related with the chaos totally developed. Yes, but, but then why? I mean, it is supposed that the best measure of the complexity is this parameter form measure. Mm, yes. We, we consider that people still are waiting in the same that okay. they are following Now, this. The, the, for uh, article 4, the system is ergodic, yes. so it's completely random. Completely random? What, what, what do you mean by that? Completely random, no, because it, it, this is deterministic behavior. Yeah. So it's random. Like, like all the random number generators that I know in any computer. This particular case, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like all the random number generators that I know in any computer. No, right? uh, this doesn't, doesn't pass any of the standard tests. Maybe, but let me just finish the question. Mm -hmm. The question is that if I look at that, this Brandon Pope measure of the complexity <coughs> just keeps increasing. Yes. While the other one goes for a maximum. Mm -hmm. yes. So you would expect that. That since article 4 is the most random situation for this map, that the complexity goes to a maximum before arriving to article 4. Because this there is practically random. Well, this is the maximum you see, you see there, but it might be that for 16 it's still more chaotic. No, 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 The logistic map can go all the way up to Article 4, and there is the most random uh, but, system. It's completely random, it's totally ergodic. But you, it is so, just, so why the, this, which is the one that is supposed to be the best measure for complexity, that because your argument at the very beginning is that it has to go to a maximum and then it why here it does not show this? My, 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 my answer is that in this case we don't have in a stochastic random behavior. This is not the topic, this is the deterministic behavior. That's exactly yes. what you want to distinguish. So, I, I am trying to distinguish the behavior, no? I didn't distinguish the Yeah, anything. that's why they have weaknesses. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, a system may not necessarily go for maximum, is that right? 
No. I mean, it is an absolute, somehow an absolute... No, no, I say that in general, in general, 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 general,
Because in the first slide, we have set six elements in the probability distribution, and the second one, 24. But it is really difficult to generalize the result for large and many dimension. So our quantifier is able to discriminate the a strong persistence and long current, long range dependence present in this stochastic process. Then we use the, the same approach to analyze the fractional Gaussian noise. This is the noise associated, associated to the previous stochastic process. So the fractional Gaussian noise is obtained as the difference between the, uh, between the fractional beam motion. Uh, the fractional Gaussian noise has a similar power spectrum, and in this case, the power exponent is between minus 1 and 1. And according to the ratio of the value of alpha, we have different behavior. In particular, in the case alpha is between minus 1 and 0, you have an stationary and, and the persistent behavior. When you have alpha equal to 0, you recover the white noise uh, process. And in the case that alpha is between 0 and 1, you have uh, an stationary and persistent behavior. It is clear that the, well, in the, in the particular case of alpha equal to 0, so with the white noise, you have a maximum of the permutation f equal to 1. But it, this particular quantifier is not able to discriminate these two different behaviors, stationary and non sorry, persistent and anti-persistent behavior, because the quantifier is the same for both. So in some way, we can conclude that the results are better for a non-stationary stochastic process than for a, a stationary stochastic process, in order to discriminate behavior, in order to, in order to discriminate correlation present in a, in a process. Note that in this case, this is the stationary stochastic process, you are not able to determine this behavior of this behavior. This is a persist and the persistent fractional Gaussian noise and this is a persistent fractional Gaussian noise. In the previous case, in the previous case, you are able to discriminate the presence of correlation. Yes, this, this is maybe the more important conclusion related with these results. In this particular case, these are numerical simulations for the permutation entropy with different values of the bedding dimension and for the complexity with different values of the bedding dimension, 4, 5, and 6. The behavior of, of quantifier are in some way similar, they are more or less giving the, the same information. We have a maximum of the, of the permutation entropy when alpha is equal to 0 and a minimum of the complexity, a decreasing behavior of the permutation entropy and increasing behavior of the complexity. So, this particular behavior, this decreasing and this increasing of the permutation and complexity respectively, are associated with the presence of correlation in the stochastic process. What happens at uh, a p equal to one? Where you have this alpha? Uh, alpha equal to one. Yeah, the, the, in this case you don't have pro a process because uh, the, the functional motion, the functional motion is uh, is between uh, is between one and three. And the uh, fractional Gaussian, Gaussian noise is between minus mm -hmm. one and one. I don't know, maybe you look at, uh, you know, but this is not a process. In this case, we have a gap, a gap in the quantifier for this, for this particular value. But we don't have a process to, to include in this case. Mm -hmm. uh, the, yes, this is important. But we have, we have a discontinuity, a gap uh, associated with this. In this case, in this case, we have the process, and in this case, we have the the noise associated to the process. And in the middle, we have the discontinuity in the quantifier. Maybe a, a more efficient way to analyze this result is in the complexity entropy causality pair. In this case, the complexity is in the vertical axis, the entropy is in the horizontal axis, and you can follow the trajectory described by the, <coughs> the process in this particular representation plane. This is the, uh, the blue line is the fractional gradient motion and the red, the, the red curve is the fractional Gaussian noise. So in this case you, you can see that in the case of a random process or near to a random process you have value of the complexity near to zero and a value of the entropy near to one. Yes. When you introduce correlation, you move the value of the quantifier to uh, intermediate value for the entropy and intermediate value for the complexity. This, uh, this limit curve are obtained numerically by maximizing the value of the complexity for a fixed value of the, of the entropy. This, this result was generalized, this is not my work, but which was generalized in some way by Eduardo Rosso and co-authors, and it, 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 they, they have found that, well, in this case we have the function of motion and the function of Gaussian noise, this is why they know, uh, this is the same result I have, I have presented, but then we have several stochastic processes and this is uh, several chaotic process, sorry, and these chaotic processes have 
intermediate value for the entropy and larger value for the complexity. They are, they are, they are near the limit curve, the upper limit curve. This is the, the value of So in some way, you can say that this is the relation associated with the periodic dynamic, and this is the relation associated with the stochastic process. Yes, in this case, note that we are introducing the relation, and this, this, this correlation and moving the value of the quantifier. This is clear, very extremely strongly related with the point uh, previously discussed, but, well, the, uh, it's a result. The, the point is that maybe in some way, by using this particular representation space, and according to the location of the different process, we are able to discriminate the stochastic and chaotic dynamics. Yes. You don't have particular boundaries before. No, 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 it's, 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 yes, yes. It's, it's not my like but yes, you, you don't have limits. You know, actually discriminate yeah. if one is dynamic or one, if one is stochastic or one is, mm. yes, yes, chaotic. But for the logistic map, you have the to. complexity was increasing with the entropy, <laughs> all the way up to the maximum entropy. Yes, you, you are moving in this, in the, in this way. Yeah, and what, what similar in some way similar yeah, to the, the okay, why, okay, so what's the line for the logistic map here? Yeah. No, in this case you, you, you can follow in this case you have the logistic map but I think that with R equals four, this is the point included include here. The logistic map here. But this entropy should be normalized to something. Yes, the, yes, the yes, yes, yes it's normalized. Both are normalized. Yes, but, one. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, so so one for each system, one means something different probably. For each yeah. system, one means also. I mean, you don't know an entropy in a different in a different way for the system, or or it's just no for the maximum value possible maximum value. The maximum value for the entropy is associated to the to the probability. It's the lowest of the number of elements of the probability distribution. This is a physical entropy distribution. This is an analysis number that we can understand. Yes, I, uh, I have forgotten to remember that in this case you have two normalized quantities. Yes. For this, is not a physical entropy. This is a mathematical the information entropy. Mm -hmm. That's not a maybe, 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 yes. So, uh, well, the, the next approach um, is that we use this particular statistical quantifier to analyze which. Try to classify uh, stock market dynamics. We, we analyze finances, financial stock market, 32 stock market from different countries of the world, and these countries are, uh, well, in this case we consider 18 developed and 14 emerging stock market. This classification is according to this particular Morgan Standard Which index. year? What? From which year are these data? From the Bloomberg database. But when, from when? From ah, from 1995 to 2000. Okay. <laughs> yes, 15 years. So, well, the idea is to try to discriminate in some ways if developed or an emerging country have different behavior. Yes, this this classification between developed and emerging are according another economical factor, not only the financial density. Yes, it is clear. Mm -hmm. So, well, we are analyzing only the financial density <coughs> and trying to quantify the efficiency in some way of the time series. It is clear that if the Time, if the financial time series is efficient, the value of the entropy will be near to 1 and the value of the complexity will be near to 0. And we have found this result. These are the, the blue points, uh, are developed stock market, uh, develop, to be more precise, financial market associated to developed country, and in this case, the uh, red point are associated to emerging countries, uh, to the financial time series of emerging countries. And you can find, you, in average, you obtain uh, the result that, in general, in general, in average, developed uh, countries have financial stock market efficient because the complexity is, is lower and the uh, entropy is larger. You, then you have that emerging, in general, in average, have lower value for the entropy and larger value for the complexity. So in a way, we can say that they are more inefficient. More the, the correlation present in the time series is introduced in this particular location. Yes, more predictable. This is the point. And in the middle, only as a curiosity in some way, we, 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 it is clear that it's in some ways very... Um, yeah, the, the, limit is, the, the limits imposed to the different group are, uh, are not objective. Yeah, so, well, in this case, I have <laughs> 10 different countries. 10 different countries, 
Canada, Canada, Greece, Austria, uh, I don't remember, I think that this is Taiwan, in the same we have, yeah, and in reality with the emerging we have Argentina, Brazil, China. Where is Spain there? No, Spain is, no, it's better. Spain is, Spain is 24, 24 is here. In order to, in order to understand that, in order to, to show that in some cases there are some developed countries that have not efficient financial penicillin and that there is another not emer emerging uh, country with the efficient penicillin. This is the idea we can to, to, to include in the, in the paper. So it is clear, I insist, it is, uh, it is clear that these limits are totally arbitrary in some way, but well, the idea is to show that the financial, the financial market associated to a country can be inefficient and the, the, the country can be developed. Yeah, this is not idea. We are not trying to classify countries according to developed or emerging. We are, not, uh, we are only trying to say that there is emerging countries with efficient type Is this clear the idea? Yeah. No. No. What do you mean by efficient? Efficient is unpredictable. So, and if you have the ability, no, yes, you need higher propane. So this, this financial density is more, more efficient. Nobody can predict. Nobody yes. can predict. Yes, they are they are less predictable than this one. They are not not predictable. Yes. But, but, but if you take this data and normalize the number of companies or the number of investors that are given, I mean, because the fact, that, I mean, the fact that, that, that the number of countries are more or less, say, efficient, which in fact is more or less predictable, so, so I mean, if you have a market with very few companies or very few yes. investors, yes. The, the change in prices will be much lower than the big market. So, uh, if Greece, for example, have the same size like Canada, yeah. as number of companies, for example, yeah. then they might be called together to yeah. all that I have. Yeah, the point is that I am not And then if the United States has a very big number of companies there, uh, then it might have much faster fluctuation. Yes, but Argentina is in this, in this group, and this is not in, in the very big market. Which one? Argentina is in the middle. Well, but the number of companies is uh, small. It's small. Yeah. And the number of investors? <laughs> well, maybe, 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 maybe this is related with another factor, another economic factor. But we are trying to analyze the efficiency of time cities. Only that, not trying to understand the behavior of the economic growth. Time series of 10 years is quite a short time series. Yeah, it's difficult to find exactly the same time series of different countries. Instead of 10 years, you look at 50 or 100 years, you will find something that is much more predictable mm. than what you observed yes, yes. the last 10 years. I mean, we have we, we have, a, well, we have to, to discriminate the, the reason behind this particular behavior. So we shifted the original time series and we uh, recalculate the value of the quantifier, and we have found that when you uh, shuffle it in this case, it uh, means that you uh, change the temporal order of the ICDS, so all the temporal correlations are restored. And you find in this case that these results are significant in the sense that when you destroy the temporal correlation, the value of the entropy is near to 1 and the value of the complete is near to 0. I have destroyed all the temporal correlations, so we assume that this particular, this particular position of the original time financial time series is associated to the correlation. But also we have analyzed the surrogate data by using a phase and randomization in order to quantify the effect of non gaussianity of the time series. Yes? And we have found that in this case, always the, the position of the quantifier are closer to the, to the ideal point, but the displacement is small. So the, the, main, the main factor of the, of the inefficiency of the time series, of the financial time series, is the correlation. According to the and the non gaussianity or the non linearity present are also important, but the influence, the influence is, is small. <coughs> yes? Then we have analyzed this is our new result. In this case, we have a more larger database. In this case, we include 56 different countries, developed, emerging, and from countries considered frontier. 
this is the, the third group of the classification. And we have found in average the same behavior. In general, developers have a better position. Then we have the emerging and finally the front There is are exceptions here. Yes, but in average, the behavior is uh, follow more or less this classification. Well, it is clear that in this, in this particular, in, in all the previous application, we always use the same value of the time delay equal to 1. We always use the time delay equal to 1. So it is necessary to understand the effect that the time delay has on the time series, on the, on the analysis, on this kind of, of, in, in this kind of analysis. So in this case, we can see that, for example, if we choose uh, a time in an embedded delay equal to 2, we are in some way subsampling the original time series. This is the fact that the embedding delay has on the original time series. There are some limits for D. The, the, the dating dimension should be uh, should, should, should satisfy this relation. The number of elements of the time series should be much larger than the uh, factorial C. But what about tau? We are trying to understand the effect that the, the embedding delay has on the result. This is the idea. So it is clear when we change the value of the embedding delay, we are considering different time scale present in the original time series because we are changing, we are changing the, the sampling of the original time series. So the question can be, are these quantifiers useful to identify time delay dynamics from time series? This is the question we are trying to answer. Yes, by the, the behavior of these quantifiers is a function of the embedding delay. What, what kind of information is given? This is the idea. In order to answer this, this question, we analyze the Michael oscillator, in particular in this case in a chaotic machine with an embedding delay equal to 60. This is the and we have found that when, in this case, we have an embedding delay, a, sorry, a time delay equal to 60. The time delay, the feedback time delay equal to 60, the sampling time associated to the numerical simulation is 0.2. So when tau is equal to 300, we have found the maximum of the of the complexity and the minimum of the entropy. In some way, we, we, we have found that uh, we are able to estimate the presence of the time delay in the time series. Yes. Note that when uh, the time delay is uh, the time delay of the system is 60 and the numerical the sampling time is 0 0.2. So when when the time uh, when the embedding delay is equal to 300, you you match the value of the embedding delay and the time delay. Yes. It's clear this point because it's important. What this maximum associated to the complexity and minimum associated to the entropy is in the position of the time delay of the C. What would, expect, what would you expect if this uh, ratio doesn't match any, any integer? It may happen that you're. Uh, but in the, the ratio case, is, not, is not an integer. What, what do you well, expect? In the case, we, we, we expect a, a, a maximum, but maybe the amplitude is. is and then we have some with this particular point. The theoretical to understand why the idea is more or less the question that you are to You are to some the additional time series. This is more or less the argument, but it is not clear. We are trying to analyze this particular point. You are by changing the value of the time delay of the embedding delay, you are changing the you are subsampling the additional time series in some way. This is clear. So you are considering the, the different time scale present in the original time series. The when correlations are longer times. At the delay time, exactly. You are yes. so the correlation at yes. the delay time. Yes. Okay. Only at both correlations. Mm -hmm. yes. So when the time, when the embedding delay matches the value of the time delay of the system, you have a, in this case, a, an extreme of the quantifier. Yes. By calculating the, the correlation function of different types, and you find a maximum at the relation yes. of the system. Yes, yes. It's yes. clear that you, you have another, another tool to, 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 determine, to determine this particular time delay. But we are trying to justify the use of this quantifier. Why? And this is the, the, the other point. This is the structure of the minimum of the entropy and the maximum of the complexity for different yes. main Yes? Yes. To the Fourier transform of the signal out of this, so it's a chaotic process. So I expect it yes. to have all the frequencies. Nevertheless, it may still have pronounced peaks at uh, the at 300 and so on. And have you checked that? No. And then we won't be very uh, surprising that it's going to be. We're going to relate the, the maximum of the power spectrum to particular frequency with this particular result. This is the idea. 
No, I'm just asking if you look to the Fourier, just the plain Fourier, Fourier transform. Yeah, what is the same the Fourier transform, but... Uh, you have pixels that will be the entire number. You have? Yeah. So yeah. Don't, then, then what, what is surprising that you have pixels also there? Yeah? No, it's not surprising, but we consider that this is a good way to estimate the delay. But I couldn't you estimate just with the Fourier transform? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. But, but while well, maybe yeah. in the present of now, the, the Fourier transform is not... I am not trying to say that this is the best that I need to, uh, to determine or to estimate the time delay. I am trying to show that in this particular situation you are able to estimate the time delay when this one is fine. In particular, it is clear that this particular symbolization methodology is flawless under the presence of noise, so we, in, we, we add noise to the numerical simulation. And we try to, to see the, the roughness of the technique in order to estimate the time delay. So in this case, you, the, the different curves indicate the, uh, correspond to different uh, noise level. In this case, we, we found from 5% to 100%. Yes? And in order to, to see better this result, we have, a, we have estimated the, we have calculated the radio to, from, uh, the radio from the, Amplitude at the peak respect with the amplitude at the baseline. And we have found this, this result that this radio, uh, this is the plot of this radio according to the noise level. That's the signal to noise Yes, this is the, the signal to noise level. Yeah. And we have found that in presence of noise, in the presence of noise, the ability of the quantifier to determine the presence the, the, the pres of the time delay is better than without noise. So, this is a noise enhanced phenomenon in some way. The presence of noise helps to identify the presence of the line delay. And in the particular range of when the noise level is between 0 and 40, you have a better approach, a better, a better result than without noise. I don't know if the idea that, well, we consider that this result is interesting because this particular technique is better in presence of noise. The reason is that there is like an interplay between the, the, the background and the noise, and the stochastic noise in some way. It is clear that the, that the uh, influence of the noise, of the stochastic noise, is more important on the background than on our peaks. This is for observational noise and this is for dynamic noise. The same result. In, in present of noise, we have better results than without noise. So we consider that this result is valuable, it's, it's important because this technique is particular, particularly useful in the case that you have noise. I, I don't know, maybe another technique can be also useful in this situation, but in this case, you have a particular noise enhancement result, but, well. We have also analyzed the uh, numerical chaotic uh, trace simulated by using the Lanko Washashi model, and in particular the coherent collapse regime, and we have found that uh, also, in this case, the technique is able to, to discriminate the presence of the time delay of the system. The other maxima obtained are exactly at subharmonic and harmonic of the time delay of the system. We consider that the presence of this subharmonic and uh, the, 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 this peak at, at uh, subharmonic and harmonic of the original time delay is, is useful in this case because it helps us to identify the time delay. <coughs> And these are experimental, experimental data. In this case, we have analyzed the, the time trees obtained in the photon laboratory, and we, we show in this particular plot that we are able to discriminate, to discriminate the presence of the time delay associated to the system. These are the other peaks associated to the subharmonic. In this particular case, for example, this is the, the second subharmonic, and the amplitude is lower because in this case, the, this second subharmonic is, is not exactly uh, an entire number of the original time delay. Yes, so this is the, the effect. Mm -hmm. But we have also found another, from my point of view, interesting result that in the particular case of the numerical result, and, and when the main delay is smaller, it's, it's, it's small, in this case we have an main delay between 0 and 50, we have another totally different result. We consider that this is another principle associated to the, to the chaotic uh, dynamics. Now that in this case we have the maximum of the complexity, this is a complexity for different embedding dimensions, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And this is the permutation entropy. Yes. 
in, in the previous result, you, you can conclude that the complexity of the entropy is more or less the same information because when you have a maximum of the entropy, you have a minimum, uh, a minimum of the entropy, you have a maximum of the complexity, and in general, more or less both quantifiers are giving the same information. But in this case, the behavior is totally different. Note that this is a maximum and in a small time delay. And this maximum, we associate this particular, this particular maximum with the optimal time delay of the system. Yes. Why? If you believe that this is the optimal or the, to be more precise, the minimal required sampling time. If you believe that this is the optimal sampling time, it is clear that when you um, choose an embedding delay smaller than this one, you are over sampling the additional time series. Yes. If this is the, the optimal sampling time, if this is the optimal sampling time, when you use an smaller embedding delay, you are oversampling the additional time series. When you oversample an additional time series, you are introducing non spurious or not trivial structure. It is clear, no? Yes? In some way, you are introducing redundancy in the original study from the additional time series. So the value of the complexity is smaller and the value of the entropy is smaller. When you move to the, to the right, in this case, with the uh, embedded delay larger than the, than the optimal, you are subsampling the additional time series. So in, in this way, you are losing the correlation present in the original process. So the value of the, the, value of the complexity of the complexity decrease and the value of the entropy increase. Yes. This is the main reason why we are trying to justify the work of the world, but this is the main reason because we consider that this particular approach gives us the optimal <coughs> time delay of the chaotic system. The optimal, uh, the, the optimal sampling time sorry, of the chaotic system. We compare this result, sorry, we compare this result, if you, you take the power spectrum associated to the numerical simulation, we have, uh, we have uh, this spectrum. And if you cut at this frequency, this is the 99% of the power spectrum. According to the Nikushano theorem, the optimal sampling time will be 27. This is the value obtained by using the Nikushano approach. And if you say that you should sample two points on that period, no. this one, this yes. and yes. the period, well, it's not periodic, so you cannot have yes. this one. This one is yes. Yes. the maximum is, you need, you need is five. Uh, yes. The maximum is about five. Yes, but, uh, yes, but you, this is not a band limited. This is not a band limited uh, signal. This, this is clear. Yes, the, the, the result associated with the equation on sampling theory is when you have a band limited signal. Yes, but in the case that you consider the 99 percent, because we, which, which is the frequency associated to this particular spectrum? We, we, when you cut this, I don't know if. Uh, 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 since it's not periodic, then. I know what I mean. The frequency, what you have to sample. Well, if you are going to measure 50 gigahertz, you have to sample at least two points per period. That's what Nick was saying. Yeah, but the point is here, it's certainly you can sample more than one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Go to infinity. With yeah, that. that's right. So, so the point is only you want to reproduce only, for example, a threshold of 99% of the spectral power you want to have covered. And then you can define a bandwidth. Well, well, but, you can, but then you can integrate the, the spectrum and to see what is 90%. Exactly. Yes, that, 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 that is. And the value of 10 is 27. Mm -hmm. This is the optimal sampling time according to the unique channel sampling theory. Yes. And this is the value associated with, according to this result. This is the, the location of the maximum of the complexity according to the main image. From the pessimistic point of view, you can say that this result changes according to the many dimensions, so this is really bad. Yes. From the optimistic point of view, you can say that increasing the many dimensions, you are increasing the length of the sequence, so you, are, you have more information about the system. So, increasing the many dimension, you relax the condition about the sampling time, and you can increase the value of the sampling time because you, with this many dimension, you increase the sampling time and you have or you retain exactly the same information associated with the system. But, well, this is, a, this is a discussion now, so we are trying to justify better this result. I, I, I believe about this result, I feel that this is the optimal something time, because, well, the maximum of the complexity is clear that it's associated to a, 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 max, a, a clear evidence of the chaotic dynamic of the, of the process. And if you uh, over something or sub something the, which is value, well, you, you are introducing some Redundancies in some case, and you are losing the relation with the other. So I think that there is a different but well. 
Well, this is um, the end in relation with, with conclusions. Uh, we have used supermutation network and have a complexity estimated by using the one and pompe symbolization methodology to characterize the cut process with different correlation. Uh, different stock market dynamics can be classified by analyzing their location and the complexity of the causality plan. It is possible to perform a reliable, a reliable time delay justification, the permutation information of chronic flows, solitic noise, observational and, and dynamical, moreover, noise enhancing phenomena is found. And finally, this quantifier allows to identify the characteristic time scale, type of time delay, and minimal required sampling time present in the chaotic dynamic of the semiconductor cluster subject to optical feedback, estimation of both quantifiers. In this case, it's important to say that you need information of both quantifiers to, to find this particular time scale. In the, in the previous result, when only one of the two quantifiers is enough in, in some way to find information, but in this case, you need both quantifiers. That's, that's all. This maximum, this, we have a maximum for the complexity, this is one, and we associate this particular maximum to the optimal something, something time, for a small, for a small, uh, even less, uh, yes? But we don't have found another maximum, another uh, no. Just to remind you that I'm always seeking for speakers. <laughs> if anyone would like to present something, let me know. Sure. Okay. Thanks again.